everyone, Sanjeev here. Um, if you're someone who's still thinking that, oh, what is the right age? Should I start investing in property now? Or should I wait for some more years or months? Then definitely um, uh, you need to watch this episode because uh, I have got right now a guest um, uh, who has just bought his second investment property and, uh, you know, he's almost 24. And I thought I'll uh, interview and, uh, you know, get in his mindset being such a, uh, you know, his story has even inspired me, you know, like being just, uh, you know, almost 24, bought his second property. Last year, he bought his first property as well. So, you know, I thought I'll uncover and, and I'll learn and get into his, uh, uh, why he, uh, you know, get into property and how. So, um, let's, uh, you know, so, hi, Kurt. How are you? Hey, Sanjay. No, thank you. No, very good. Thank you. No, thanks for having me on to talk about my journey so far. Yeah. So now I think uh, you're definitely your uh, journey is uh, very inspirational and, uh, you know, you're definitely one of those action taker. So uh, do you want to give a, a background of, you know, um, who you are, where you come from, Kurt? And uh... Yeah. No, thanks, Sanjeev. Um, yeah, so I'm 23, almost turning 24 at the end of this year. Um, so been in the property a couple of years now. But um yeah, it all started probably the idea of investing um pretty much as soon as I finished school. Started earning money, had a job. Um and that's yeah, as soon as I earned money I wanted to go how do I, how do I make more, my money work for myself? That's where I kind of started the whole idea. Um so yeah, I got into landscaping after school. Um that was something I kind of I went to was looking for a job and knew I wanted to do a trade because you can always something to fall back on having those handy skills. Um, so yeah, I got into landscaping, did that for about four to five years, finished my apprenticeship, got uh, my qualification in that. And, um, yeah, I was happy in my journey as well. I'm um, doing landscaping, happy with the company. Um, it was a great team, good environment to work in and learn a lot as well. Um, and throughout there, obviously, I earned some money and, um, the whole time I was always, um, in that mindset of wanting to make my money work for itself. So, um, while I was landscaping, I managed to save up enough for a deposit to buy my own property. Yeah. So that's how. So how, like, so, so I know you live in Sydney, right? Um, here, um, in the Western Sydney. Now, um, what happened, like, say, so, you know, of course, uh, you, you were working in landscaping, um, you know, as a trade person for a good four or five years, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so you left, uh, so you were still studying during that time or you quit your, like you finished your schooling and that's where you got into the trades and full time and, and started saving money. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So as soon as I finished school, pretty much the next week after the HSC, I jumped straight into the trade. Um, I just knew I wanted to start making money and, um, yeah, but, uh, I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it yet, but I knew I had to start somewhere. Um, and I wanted a good steady full-time job that gave you good, um, skills and life skills as well. So that's why a trade seemed like it was a good option at that time. So you didn't, um, bother like going for a higher education or something. Uh, rather than you choose to like, you know, get into the life skill, the real trade, you now make some money, correct? Yeah, exactly. I think um, I've always believed that you just got to get into it and like get out in the world and learn those real experiences. Um, you can go to uni and everything and get into big debt that way. And um, obviously there's certain things in life that you need to go through that pathway to get there. Um, like such as a doctor or something like that. But, um, yeah, I knew that's nothing like that I wanted to do. So I just got to get out in the world and start earning money and working out a way to use that money that you save up to start um, investing and build wealth for your future. No, I'm, I'm very inspiring. And it's, it's like different because a lot of the people like to go to this school, including me, right? Like went to school and don't get into the higher education. But you like, okay, so when did all this started, Kurt, for you? Like, you know, uh, because you didn't follow the, uh, the, you know, the, I would say the majority of the people which, you know, uh, follow that path of, you know, education and then eventually getting in a work. Uh, but where it all started for you, like, you know, when, when did you learn that, okay, make, you know, uh, 
making money and of course you know you started investing early as ages but it all has started for you yeah no i get what you're saying so um yeah like i was very lucky to have a, a grandfather that was um he had a big port- property portfolio himself and i saw him doing very well living quite freely with um the cash flow coming in from his properties um and i could just see the lifestyle he was living just doing what he wanted to do day to day so i was like and just as a kid growing up and seeing that i was like wow like, and then seeing no one else had that as well that i knew was like what's he doing different that i can do to get there like what's he doing like why does he live like that lifestyle or whatever he wants to do um so yeah that kind of gave me that that drive and that mindset of um yeah wanting to learn of what he's been able to do and um so then i worked out obviously through property and he's got a big portfolio and um he's been building that over the amount of um years he was and so that kind of gave me that yeah inspiration to get into it and start investing and looking into property i know like you're a very good student good learner you know you observe things and you know digest very well so it so literally so you saw like your grandfather journey right of course that you know even though he was in the uh, you know what what you your grandfather you doing by the way um he was he was firstly he started off like he was a principal at a school then he got into building and then building up his portfolio and he was able to just live purely off um cash flow and other investments um so yeah he was a principal at one stage of his life and then he got more into development and building and then but none of in your family uh, other than your grandfather was in the property game is that right yeah exactly that's right and everyone would always would always hear like oh grandfather's the rich one with the money he's got the properties and it's like why does it sound like why does it seem so special like it can't be that hard um so yeah started looking into it that way and um yeah it's it's really not that hard you find that i i saw people like after finishing school people falling into the nine to five and even school teaches you that's the normal thing to do um so yeah from there like my mindset was why is like why do you have to work your whole life nine to five have kids and then obviously you want kids everyone loves kids but like nine to work nine to five have kids can't really spend the time with them grow old retire um that whole mindset just didn't make sense to me um like you have the one life to live so why why slave away your whole life and then when you're too old to actually enjoy it that's when you retire um so i knew there had to be another way to um yeah get to that retirement a lot earlier to actually enjoy the life that we've been blessed to have <laughs> um so yeah seeing seeing using grandpa's inspiration and seeing that um yeah it's achievable gave me that inspiration to look at that next get into that next step and um that's where like i actually started when i started earning money to begin with um was looking at stocks and shares and i managed to yeah just learning of that kind of teaching myself reading and um listening to a lot of podcasts as well about that because that it's obviously a lot smaller and you can get into that with a um a lot less cash so it was something appealing at um, a, a younger age and um so from there i managed to make uh, an awesome um trade with afterpay at the time just before covid so i could see the opportunity there um when everything crashed i knew everything was at the bottom and i saw afterpay before covid happened so i was a bit i was like oh wow i missed out on that one and then the big crash came so i was like oh this is my opportunity i can like afterpay it's only, it's only going to go back up from here so that's when i jumped into it and um yeah managed to make a lot of money from that as well and that helped me save up to my um first deposit for a house and then um yeah had enough for a deposit but then from there I didn't really know um I knew I wanted to buy a property because I had enough for that deposit but I just didn't know where to go from there like I learned I was reading in like a lot of books I could and looking on YouTube and listening to a lot of people but um yeah still being so young and it's so new it's um and no one really to get guide you like it can be a bit um you can be a bit lost with all the media and everything um and where to start so 
um, that's when I knew I had to reach out to a buyer's agent. Right? Like, um, yeah, it was a no-brainer for me to go to you, use someone, pay for someone's service with their expertise to, um, yeah, get that value. And um, I knew I'd, get, I'd make a return on that money I'd have paid for that buyer's agent on the on the property that I would end up buying compared to what I would have bought on myself um, and by myself. So, um, yeah, from there I just used the buyer's agent. And uh, yeah, it all started yeah, from there. No, that's good. I think see, leveraging, you know, other people' expertise. I think uh, it, it's you know, you can fast track your journey, the learning, and all those things, right? But now tell me, um, um, I think your grandfather is no more uh, uh, there, right? Otherwise, probably you would have uh, hold his hand and learn from him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's no longer with us. So at the time, I was ready to start looking at the property. I didn't really have a chance to speak to him properly about it. Um, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm sure he's happy with what I'm doing yeah, now. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be very happy. So, so okay. So your grandfather was the inspiration. Now, I think you just mentioned that. You no, know, you're doing. Uh, you, you know, you learn about shares as well. I know you learn crypto as well. Um, so you're you're doing good on the shares as well, right? So, and and you made some money. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. At that time, um, I made money throughout the day, like I was saying. Um, yeah, it was just an easy thing for me to jump into and a lot of information to learn online about shares. And I, didn't, I knew I didn't need as much to get into it. Um, so that's what got me into shares and so interested. And I knew, like, I wanted a way to make my money work for itself. And that was a quick, easy way to begin that. Um, cause property was just such a big thing at the time. Like, it wasn't even in my, like, in my vision yet. Um, just from the initial savings I had. Um, but yeah, through taking the opportunity, just, and that, that's what it also helps you. Any kind of investing, crypto, stocks, then buying property, it all, you all kind of need the same mindset for investing in general. And buying shares, that it actually taught me that investor mindset of, um, yeah, reading different data and seeing what's happening. What, what kind of growth's happening, what's happening in the markets. I mean, that really like opened up um, my whole mindset of investing and um, what needs to be done. So, yeah, I was lucky enough to have a good opportunity and follow through with Afterpay and made a good amount and then have saved up for my um, yeah, first deposit for my property, my first property. Yeah, so, so the first property uh, where you bought last year, right, 2021, uh, do you want to talk about your first property and I think I want to drill into like, you know, because that time I know, uh, of course, you use our, you know, uh, investor dream service, uh, you choose us. And, um, and, uh, you know, I was even like very surprised, like, you know, someone young like yourself, uh, working in the trade industry for like good four, five years. I know you're very disciplined with your money. Um, you know, you don't do any uh, fancy things or, uh, you know, or like you age, I know a lot of people will say, oh, you know, we can big party. Uh, you enjoy life, but at the same time, you know, you save money, right? You know, you're very disciplined with your health, your uh, habits of eating. I know uh, personally working with you, I've seen. Uh, Still have time for fun, but um, yeah, not, not too much party. So how long it took for you, like, you know, to save that? I think uh, pretty much you had around $80,000 when, uh, you know, last year because you paid that, correct? Yeah, it was around eighty thousand dollars or seventy-five. Yeah, around seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars I needed initially, um, and that included the deposit for the property, stamp duty, buyer's agent fees, LMI, all those other things. Um, so yeah, seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars is what I needed to get started, and um, you still can. How you managed to save that money? I know you know a lot of people will say, "Oh my God, eighty thousand dollars!" Right, a lot of money, especially at your age, right? Where no, you're not like uh, making a huge. Uh, income at the same time, of course, you know. You, so, how how do you manage to do that? Yeah, well, um, definitely the amount of money I made from the the shares that I bought that helped. Um, that gave it a good fast track. And then, um, yeah, I was just very disciplined in my paychecks as well, um, doing a lot of overtime things like that. Just making sure before I'd spend money, I'd put my money aside and then just stay to the limit I'll give myself for that week to spend. Um, and that just allowed me over the five years plus the extra money from shares, 
And um, yeah, it got to seventy seventy five, eighty thousand dollars in that amount of time. So um, yeah, it can be done. You just have to be disciplined and committed to it. And I knew um, yeah, that was the next step I wanted to get into. So I, I yeah, it was just driven to get to that, trying to save as much as I could. Well then, uh, Claude, I think um, really uh, inspired by your journey all the time. Now you save the the thing now. You know, at your age, again, a lot of people say, oh, man, like, what I need to do to buy a property, they might feel very overwhelmed, right? But I think when you first uh, booked a call with us, I remember you had a very clear chat and you say, you know, let's go on, right? Now, what was going in your mind? Like, you know, because buyer agent, of course, I would not say that, no. Um, it, you know, you're paying a fee uh, and for the service. So what was going in your mind? Like, I mean... I, I saw like you were never hesitant about, uh, you know, uh, uh, paying someone and all those things. So where that mindset of leverage came, you know, like where, you know, that, okay, um, I want to learn, uh, get me going. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think it comes down to the opportunity I could see. I knew there was a big opportunity there and I knew I didn't have the skills to do it myself. Um, so I just saw it as um, a no-brainer just to find that person that I can trust and rely on and I, I can see that they've experienced and they've done it themselves. Um, so I just thought I need to find that person that I can trust and rely on and pay them whatever they want to get it done because it, in the end it didn't really matter to me how much I had to pay. It just um, the end result is doesn't really matter to me. So um, I yeah, looked through a lot of um, at the time, a lot of buyers agents were kind of starting. Um, buyers agents were getting quite a lot more popular just for around COVID time. Um, so a lot of ads and things that are popping up. So I started looking to a lot more and trying to find someone that's um, done it themselves and doing kind of different things and they seem um, very educated about it. And then that's when I came across Investor's Dream and came across Sanji for yourself. So um yeah, and I could tell that you are um, yeah, you weren't trying to sell anything, you were just a very genuine person. Um, just through your videos and having a chat to you as well. Just tell you very down to earth and genuine and just wanted to help people. Um and yeah, I was really inspired by the amount of properties you bought within the time frame you did as well. So and I could tell you had a similar mindset, like you wanted to get away from that nine to five. You want to use property the same way I wanted to. So I was like, I need to use this guy. I need to know what he's doing. So that's, um, yeah, when I jumped on the call with you and, um, as soon as I started speaking to you, I just knew that you'd be the right person to help me through my investment journey. And, um, that, yeah, so that's why I didn't even hesitate. I just knew straight away, like, let's do it. Let's buy my property. Like, there's no time, like, no better time than yesterday, like, I've got the money ready, like, let's buy it. There's no point waiting. So, um, and exactly jumped on it and, um, yeah, bought a great property uh, from there. And um, because I didn't wait and sit on the fence, so I managed to buy a good property the right time and it did very well after a year, so, which um, allowed me to buy my next one. Okay. So, so now, you know, I mean, see, you know, you're very confident, uh, you make, quick decisions and know definitely you know you put your uh you do analysis as well right i know the due diligence um so now after so you bought your first property last year and um, you know what was the price point uh kurt do you want to talk about the property and then uh regarding the next purchase as well yeah so then after working with you and Jeeve, the property um uh, so we'll kind of i had a rate budget range around yeah 380 to 400 kind of mark and then you proposed um, through a property for 370, 372. So, um, yeah, we put the offer in. We picked it up at 372. It was a four bed, two bath, solid brick build as well, um, 700 and something squares. Um, and it had granny flat potential as well. So, and that's what I loved about the way you worked as well. You use different strategies, not just looking for a um, standalone thing. So, and we were able to implement that with my purchase as well, the potential for a granny flat down the line. Um, so yeah, and 
area of DK if I say which area is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, go for it. I mean, you know. Yeah. So that that one was in um, in New South Wales, in Albury, just on the border there of um, Wodonga and Albury. Um, so I picked that up in in Lavington, 372. And that was yeah, a year and a bit ago now, and um, I think straight away vacancy rates were extremely low. So we picked up a tenant. Actually, I had my tenant ready before it even settled um, through Sanji recommending the property manager as well. They were able to get me. They had a tenant ready to go. So. Um, as soon as settlement date came, I had my tenants move in for um, 4.30, which was um, at that time on a good rental um, amount as well, good rental price. So, um, yeah, straight away, it was awesome cash flow, bought for 3.72, um, renting 4.30 straight away. So, no, I was extremely happy with that first purchase. And, um, yeah, not only what the cash flow was um, that it was covering itself, I could see... The, that area, what was happening there, Sanjay went through all the data and taught me what to look for in with property. And, um, yeah, could just see the huge potential of what's becoming that area. So, um, no, and from there, it definitely didn't disappoint. A year later, it made, um, I think now it's worth 500,000. Um, yeah, so I was able to, yeah, now it's worth 500,000 within a year later. So, not extremely happy with that result. <laughs> and I think now you have taken out the equity from that property, correct? Uh, which allowed you to buy the next property. And uh... Yeah, that's right. I um, So, yeah, as soon as I knew I was ready, I had a bit of savings again and um, could quite easily see now it's worth 500000 But I'm um, straight on to my mortgage broker and um, worked out what my borrowing was at. And... Um, Everything was looking good. So I was like, okay, let's pull out the equity for my living property. Um, the valuation came back straight at 500,000. Um, so I was able to pull out, um, around 72,000 on like from that property. Um, and yeah, it was a straightforward process. I think people also are unsure when pulling out equity, like how it works if they've never done it before. Um, but it's a very straightforward process, getting onto your mortgage broker, working out. Um, how much borrowing you have and then if you have that equity in the property simply as either you can refinance and get your new loan with the, the extra amount or some some banks also give you the cash back as well um, so yeah it was a straightforward process to pull out the equity use that extra $72,000 I pulled out of that first property and um, use that as the deposit for my next one which I bought in first um, and yeah, and obviously put in a bit of my own savings as well, just cover the cost. Um, but that's how within a year I bought my second property. Just um, yeah, within I think it was about a year and six months with the two properties. So no, it was. Um, and uh, what has been the price point for the the last property you bought, your second property, and and the rental yields and. Uh, yeah, so then the second one I bought, I got that one for four seventy five, so four hundred seventy five thousand. Um, another awesome solid brick home. I think it's just under seven hundred squares. Um, that double brick build, so nice big house, and um, yeah, it's three kilometers from the ocean as well. So great location. It's um, a great suburb as well. So it ticks all the boxes and. Um, that one's getting a tenant straight away for 550. So, um, yeah, with interest rates going up and people freaking out, there's no need, no reason to freak out. Um, yeah, it's blo- blocked out the medium. It's got no idea what's happening. <laughs> They're just selling their agenda. So, um, yeah, there's plenty of markets still where, um, definitely interest rates aren't affecting them at the moment. So you just need to know where to look. Um, so yeah, the second property I got was 475. Renting for five fifty straight away, so awesome return straight off the bat in a great, great location. So I couldn't be happier. Um, yeah, so already, so now I'm just looking for my trying to get onto the third one as soon as possible. Yeah, <laughs> I know you're a quite hungry guy, uh, and uh, so so yeah. Now I think you rightly said you know there are areas where you can buy you know the rate of interest is money, but of course in fact, of course rate of interest you know the RB is increasing, but even though say it is like you now after all your expenses, your thousand or two thousand negative, it is a short term, right? 
But then, of course, if you're buying in a capital growth area, like say your first property, now of course rate of interest is higher. But then you already made your hundred thousand dollars on that, right? That's a lot of money or you know a return on your investment, right? Cash on cash, because you know I think pretty much you invested around seventy five thousand dollars last year when you bought your property, and you know just taken out another seventy two thousand from there, right? Which helped you to buy the next one. So, and the second property also you bought, you know, in a high capital growth area, uh, you know, market is moving. So say, even though you make another 5% in the next two or three, four months, which is happening, then, you know, uh, why worry about 1000 or $2,000 in a year, uh, even though you are a little bit negative, which I never promote to like to buy negative gearing, you know, always buy a positive cash flow. But I'm saying, given the rate of it is high and you're not doing any renovation or add value thing, and uh, worst case, if it is thousand dollars negative, not a big deal, right? Uh, in the in the long term, especially if you're getting a good capital growth. Yeah, exactly. And if a thousand dollars is gonna worry you um, for a year, then you shouldn't be investing anyway. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be a big deal, thousand dollars extra. So, uh, yeah, no, it's such a big opportunity cost. I think some people miss out on um, just worrying about those little things like interest rate rising and things like that. Um, and like you're saying, you just get in there, you, you know, the areas to buy or use the right people that understand what's happening and pay, pay for their expertise. And, um, yeah, that opportunity, that opportunity is huge. And, um, yeah, just sitting on the fence and waiting can be a big cost for sure. No, exactly. I mean, that's why I say, you know, people like, and you're a good example. First, you gone, looked at your grandfather, got inspired. I'm sure there are other, uh, family members in the family. Uh, whom your grandfather didn't inspire, right? But uh, how come it inspired to you? Because you're learning, you're looking for those extra things, right? And you know, and then of course you dig into it. Other people are like, why people are successful? What they're doing? And then you know, you made the decision that hey, you know, what I'm gonna start with a smaller investment with share just to play with the money and see how it feels. And then you make the decision that now I'm ready. I've got some, you know, some savings. Let's. Uh, invest in the brick and mortar because that's your one of the best asset class, right? So, so I think um, yeah, it's important that people understand and then you know, make their own decisions and then you know, of course then you know, of course look for uh, people smarter than them so that you know, they, they can learn from them and you know, uh, take the, the those decisions and implement it uh, in a cost-effective and uh, a smarter manner, right? So. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's an investment in your own self and education, paying those right people and learning from them. Um, so yeah, it's definitely I recommend everyone to do. Um, for sure. So now could, um, you know, anyone listening and uh, thinking to buy their first investment property or second, and especially in the current market situation, um, what, what do you have to say? Um, I would say, what are you waiting for? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. I think if you're ready to go, you've got the money. Um, yeah, why wait? Like, like we were just talking about, um, we're seeing markets move 5% within a couple months. Um, yeah, like it's just a huge cost to sit in there, just decide whether you should or not. If you've got the money and you want to do it, then just go in. If you don't know what you're doing, use people that do. Um, and that way you're not going to, miss out on creating such like generational wealth um, just from taking that action. Um, yeah, I'm just yeah, tell people, take that action. There's no need to be afraid. And it, it is hard with what's happening out there in the media and interest rates and all that what's happening at the moment. Um, but yeah, there's still huge opportunities Australia-wide and um, we're buying properties every day and we can see there's definitely markets that are still going crazy, only getting um, more crazy and they're not slowing down. So, um, yeah, there's plenty of opportunity out there to make money investing through property. So if you've got the money to do it, then, um, yeah, then I'd say just go for it. Yeah, no brainer no at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, that's good, uh, Kurt. Now, thanks for your time today. Um, and uh, no, I'm, I'm sure um, we'll have you uh, in our next episode talking about your, um, you know, the outside investment, what you're doing, and I uh, know uh, what's your uh, future plans and goals. So, thanks again, Kurt, for your time today. Um, no, listen, no, thanks for the opportunity to come on and talk about my journey, Sanjay. No, thank you.
Thanks buddy. See you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed and learned something new from this episode. Please don't forget to review our podcast and tune in every Tuesday 8 a.m. Sydney time to listen to all of our inspirational guests and learn from their property journey. In case you're looking for help with your property investment journey or building a property portfolio, please visit our website www.investorsdream.com.au to learn more about us and our services. And feel free to book a call from our website for a friendly chat. Have an awesome life and happy property investing.